Even greater excitement was generated by the Spider-Man movie, long planned but mired in a rights dispute. I think what Jim Cameron brings to the Spider-Man film is that finally Stan and the folks in Hollywood that work on these projects found somebody who had a great, tremendous love and history with the character. In the late 90s, director James Cameron was attached to write and direct a Spider-Man film. The film would have told a much more mature story with interesting and fresh takes on Spider-Man's mythos and its characters. The film was highly anticipated by fans and Stan Lee, who both created several pieces of promotional material in anticipation of the film's release. James Cameron even drew this illustration of Spider-Man, which may have given us a glimpse at how he imagined his version would look. However, due to legal disputes over the film rights, Cameron would drop out of the project, giving Sam Raimi the opportunity to try his hand at a Spider-Man film. From Electro's interesting reinvention to the film's themes of isolation and regret, let's take a look through James Cameron's Spider-Man to see if it would have been a worthy adaptation of the timeless character. Before we start, if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe and like the video. Anyways, let's get started. James Cameron's Spider-Man would have been a far darker drama. Instead of a cheesy film packed full of chaotic elements, Cameron would have told a much more adult and mature story which would have served as a character study for Spider-Man, exploring themes involving abuse, sex, puberty, and finding where you belong in the world, even with extraordinary gifts. The film would have received an R rating if it released today. This is because the film featured intense violence, drugs, physical abuse, death, and profanity. Peter Parker in Cameron's film is pretty accurate to his comic depiction. Of course, his greatest strength is his intelligence, excelling in every academic field at his school. However, that's about the only strengths he has. Peter isn't muscular and is quite bad at sports, a part of himself he's very insecure about. In fact, he refuses to go to parties, not wanting to have his weak body compared to the more muscular students. Peter is a very insecure person, and due to this, he doesn't have many friends to speak of. Because of Peter's inability to relate to those his age, he's developed a sort of superiority complex over others. In his mind, everyone will end up working for fast food chains, while he goes on to discover the cure to cancer. Very egotistical, yes. But the truth is that Peter is lonely. He's a social outcast that yearns for a genuine connection with others, to finally be seen and recognized for his efforts. However, in reality, he's made fun of for his interests. Studying in school has now become a coping mechanism for him, a way to find peace and solace. As we learn early on, Peter lost his parents at a very young age, an event he could never get over, even in his teenage years. Sure, he has his aunt and uncle, but they can never fill the roles his parents left behind. He still loves them, of course, but this event is what led Peter to who he is now, a broken boy who due to his trauma never learned to socialize with those his age. Intelligence now becomes a guise to hide away his yearning for social interaction. All people that stay together, seat up the steps and in the building. Mary Jane in this story is the popular, beautiful, and rich girl in school. In the film, MJ partners with Peter for a school project. At first, MJ thinks that Peter is weird, a geek that she only talks to because he can help her pass her assignment. However, 
Over the course of the film, the two would grow closer, and MJ would begin developing feelings for Peter. However, MJ is already in a relationship with Flash Thompson, the dumb jock who flashes around his good looks and expensive vehicles. Throughout the film, MJ's character begins to unravel, and we start to see the complexities of her character. For one thing, her home life is filled with abuse and neglect by her parents. Flash also seems to physically abuse her when nobody is watching. The popular girl aura she gives off is just an act to fit in and hide her insecurities. This need to wear a mask is what attracts her to Spider-Man. She feels like she can connect with him emotionally, like he's the only one that can understand what she's going through. This is what allows Peter and MJ to grow closer, deepening their bond and chemistry. Later, they share an intimate moment on top of a bridge, as long as you ignore the strange dialogue that's included. When Peter is attending a science presentation, he is bit by a genetically modified spider while taking pictures for a school paper. When Peter gets home, he is struck with a high fever and collapses on the floor of his room. He's convulsing as if suffering from a seizure, and nightmarish visions begin to cloud his mind. Peter awakens, now on top of a large tension tower. He somehow lost control and his instincts took over his body like autopilot. When Peter gets back home, he hides away in the corner of a dark basement, shaking in fear of what he just experienced. Peter is not excited at first about his new abilities, but afraid, terrified even. Only when he sees the heavenly silhouette of a spider that he begins to calm down. Peter goes to bed, and when he wakes up, his bed is covered in a sticky white substance. The substance is coming out of a structure protruding from his wrist. It shoots webbing on his face, and without thinking, he rushes out of the house. Peter once again is afraid, terrified of himself. In a panic, Peter is almost hit by a truck, but jumps and sticks to a nearby building and proceeds to land perfectly like a cat. Peter begins to realize that he's acquired extraordinary abilities. Peter tries out his newfound power and revels at what he can accomplish. When Peter first gets his powers, he uses them to make money. He starts off performing amazing stunts on a pole for passers-by. Eventually, he moves on performing for private events. His amazing feats and stunts gets him national attention. Now Spider-Man frequently appears on public access TV shows. The Spider-Man persona allows Peter to express himself freely, and people seem to love it. Peter tells people that his armbands are web shooters that he made himself. This adds to the theatricality and awe of his persona and makes him even more popular. However, Peter is afraid. Afraid that people will discover he's a freak of nature. This is why Peter wears armbands. They are used to conceal his biological webs. They create a narrative that Spider-Man is a genius. At least this way, he won't be more of a social outcast than he already was. Once again, Peter is insecure about his place in the world. Developing powers only serve to grow his disconnect from the rest of society. When Peter sees Flash abusing MJ, he proceeds to beat him up. Peter actually considers killing Flash in this moment, but keeps his anger under control. Peter's powers are now beginning to make him more violent, more rational, and more willing to act upon his emotions. He has the power to fight injustice, so why shouldn't he in his mind? That's why when he sees an abusive husband beat his wife, he attempts to intervene, only to be met with unexpected retaliation. Ben Parker 
continues to notice Peter's chaotic descent. He knows Peter is hurting inside and wants him to open up about his problems. Peter sees his uncle's attempt to be emotionally supportive, but knows he can never understand what he's going through. Peter tells him he's okay, and Ben picks up on this and sadly knows his attempts at reaching his nephew have failed. The rest of Spider-Man's origin closely follows the comic version. However, after Uncle Ben's death, Spider-Man does not become the traditional hero we all know. He's a man who in his anger recklessly employs his powers for selfish reasons. Now Spider-Man hunts down criminals like a predator. His sole mission becomes striking fear into the hearts of criminals. However, Spider-Man soon learns the consequences of his vigilantism. In his crusade, someone dies a thief. Only about his age, he trips and slips off a fire escape, falling to his death. Peter is unable to save him. The line between good and evil is blurring. What's the point of being a hero when you're unable to save everyone? At some point, Peter steals a bag of money from drug dealers. They got it illegally after all. He should have the right to use it for himself to use it for his aunt, who's currently in the hospital awaiting surgery. However, Peter's guilt overwhelms him. He might be poor, he might need the money more than anyone else, but this is wrong. Peter empties the bag of money, one of the most difficult choices he's ever had to make. J. Jonah Jameson serves the same purpose as most versions, to slander and spread misinformation about Spider-Man. His coverage of Spider-Man at first isn't for petty reasons. Without context, many of the things Spider-Man does paints the picture that he's a terrible person. So in Jonah's mind, Spider-Man actually is a criminal that should be held accountable. James Cameron has an interesting approach to Electro, reimagining him as a businessman with the power to control all forms of electrical energies. Electro in this film doesn't believe in violence. The real power comes from information and knowledge. Electro is a man of great intelligence, but he's also egotistical, self-centered, and believes He's the next step in human evolution. That's why he gathers other superpowered individuals like him and takes an interest in Spider-Man. However, when Spider-Man refuses to join them, Electro attacks him in a psychological way. He buys media companies and tells them to spread misinformation about Spider-Man. He hires criminals to dress up as Spider-Man and cause chaos. Electro wants Peter to feel alone and hated in the world. This way, Peter will crawl right back to him. It's a battle of mental fortitude instead of a physical one. The film ends with a final swing, with Spider-Man disappearing into the distance. James Cameron's Spider-Man would have served as a character study, exploring Peter Parker's insecurities of fitting in with others his age. The development of his new powers isn't treated like a good thing. He's scared of them and thinks they'll only make him more isolated. In the film, he must learn to accept his powers and take on the responsibility of being a hero.